going to go ahead and get started. Audio recording for this meeting has begun. Um, so you know all of the attendees are in listen-only mode. You can please use the chat box for any questions uh, that you have, and we'll be addressing those throughout the presentation. And as well, if there are questions at the end that we haven't answered, um, we will be sure and answer those to everyone who's attended through an email to the group. But we will answer them as we go as possible. So we are so excited to have so many of you joining us for today's webinar. Um, we do want to encourage your active engagement and participation also, so we will have a few polls for you to participate in. Um, and again, type any comments or any questions that you have as they come up in that chat box for us. Uh, the, this course is called Artists for Managers, and it is intended for managers or supervisors who oversee their agency's artist program. The, the Antiretroviral Treatment and Access to Services Intervention. This is the first virtual learning session in the series. We understand that many of you are at different stages and have different levels of expertise with implementing ARDIS. We believe this format will support effective learning for each of you. We're counting on your experience and expertise in our live TA session to provide peer learning as well. We want to remind you that this course does not replace a formal artist training to deliver the intervention. If you'd like to participate in a formal training, we will provide you with the links at the end of the session for you to request it and to access the pre-course module. So we do want to go ahead and highlight that this presentation is the result of a collaborative effort of four capacity building <coughs> providers, members of the SEBA provider network. And that is myself, C.A. Laris from ETR Associates, Armand Lors with JSI Research and Training Institute, Melanie Graham from the New York Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, and Sarah Jane Rath from Proceed. And you'll be hearing from each of us as we go today throughout our webinar. So to get us started, today we'll be providing you with an overview of artists relevant to your managerial role. After your participation in this series, you'll be able to describe how the core elements of ARDIS and how this intervention fits within the National HIV Prevention Goals and within High Impact Prevention Goals. You will recognize the steps needed in each of the four implementation phases in your organization to implement ARDIS successfully, and you will identify how to obtain technical assistance to build the capacity of your organization and to enhance the implementation of ARDIS. So let's go ahead and get started. So we've, <coughs> excuse me, we've designed a series to support managers and supervisors who oversee programs that are implementing artists, the public health strategy, often as part of your CDC-funded initiatives for high impact prevention. So this is a three-part series that includes this live webinar, which provides you with an overview of all of the key information managers need to know to support their artist staff, and then a series of four 30-minute self-paced mini-modules to provide more detailed information on key components necessary to support the successful implementation of artists, and finally, a live technical assistance session when managers and supervisors have access to a panel of skilled capacity building providers to answer questions and help troubleshoot any issues or concerns. Upon your successful completion of this webinar, plus the four mini-modules and the final TA session, you will be eligible for six hours of continuing education units. So today, we're beginning this series with an overview webinar where we'll touch on the key elements that you'll need to understand to efficiently and effectively provide support to your artist program implementation at your own organization. We have organized this into four phases. First is the getting started phase, which includes the considerations you need to take into account to implement the intervention and when becoming familiar with the antiretroviral treatment and access to services program or ARDIS. The pre-implementation phase, this is, involves any necessary adjustments within the organization, planning for the necessary human and monetary resources, building relationships with community partners, creating a marketing plan, and developing a monitoring and evaluation plan. Then there's the implementation phase, and that refers to the issues that the implementing organization staff will focus on 
while implementing ARDIS. And finally, in the maintenance phase, this is where you're integrating ARDIS into existing services, you're continuing to work to adapt, monitor, and evaluate the intervention, as well as to make any necessary changes. In step two, on your own schedule between now and March 28th, we're asking you to watch the four mini-modules to give you detailed information on these four phases. These are available to you through the web link that we'll share at the end, and you should have also gotten in your email. So you can watch these modules as time permits, and each module lasts just about 30 minutes. So again, those are the four modules related to the four phases, getting started, pre-implementation, implementation, and maintenance. The third step in this process is for you to attend the live TA webinar, webinar session on March 28th, so one month from today. In this session, you'll be able to discuss your ideas, questions, and concerns with a team of artist special CBA providers and other program administrators implementing artists or linkage to care programs in CBOs, health departments, and healthcare organizations with your capacity building assistance provider staff who are skilled in this intervention. So now we're going to go ahead and switch gears, and Sarah Jane is going to discuss how ARDIS relates to the continuum of care and high impact prevention. Thank you very much, BA. And as you will notice, this graph shows clearly where clients need additional support to link into care, take ARTs on a regular basis, and achieve viral suppression. You're probably all very familiar with the continuum of HIV care. The numbers of clients who are HIV positive who are engaged in care, prescribed ART, and virally suppressed has increased over the years, but not to the percentage of the National HIV Prevention Goals for 2020. Understanding this information is critical to understanding how artists can help you achieve these goals and eventually, hopefully, close the gap. The National HIV Prevention Goals, formerly known as NHAS, are in line with the core elements of ARTIS. ARTIS helps an individual find health care coverage or seek free treatment. ARTIS can also help improve the outcomes of HIV care continuum through linkage to other services, which may include an HIV navigator. ARTIS helps develop a model of competent, comprehensive care that looks at the individual from a holistic perspective. Goal two is increasing access to care and improve, improving health outcomes for people living with HIV, which includes health care coverage, which matters for people living with HIV, improving outcomes at every step of the HIV care continuum must remain a priority, developing models of competent care that treat the whole person as well as the virus is crucial. So increasing the percentage of people living with HIV who know their status to at least 90%, increasing the percentage of newly diagnosed persons linked to HIV medical care within one month of their HIV diagnosis to at least 85%, and ideally immediately, and increasing the percentage of persons who, with diagnosed HIV infection who are retained in HIV medical care to at least 90%. The goal of ARTIS is to assist persons who have been recently diagnosed with HIV getting linked into care for the first time. ARTIS, however, can also help persons living with HIV re-entering care after a prolonged absence. ARTIS is a multi-session approach that focuses on the needs of each client individually. It's important for you to understand the approach and the goal approach of ARTIS, as well as its process and structure, in order to be able to effectively support your ARTIS linkage coordinators and other staff in their efforts. There are many modalities to implement ARTIS. Typically, ARTIS programs are most successful when they are closely connected to an HIV testing program. This gives a consistent source of referrals to ARTIS. If a client receives a positive test result, the HIV test counselor or educator can refer them directly to artists to support linkage to care. Many agencies link their artist program to their testing program, partner with a testing site, and or collaborate with local health department. 
I'm now going to hand this over to Melanie, who's going to describe the artist's core elements. Artist has four main elements that provide the foundation and structure for successful linkage into care. Understanding the relevancy of each one of these core elements helps you as a manager identify ways to support the linkage coordinators in all of their efforts to implement artists with fidelity. Artist strives for building an effective relationship between the linkage coordinator and the client. It also empowers and motivates clients by focusing on their strengths, which includes conducting a strengths-based assessment and encouraging clients to identify their own strengths, abilities, and skills that will support their effective linkage to medical care and accomplishments of their goals. Artists also fosters ownership of efforts and success by facilitating the ability of clients to accomplish their own goals. This involves helping them identify and pursue specific goals and developing a step-by-step -step plan with them by using the artist session plan. Lastly, artists addresses the needs of the beneficiaries by maintaining a client-driven approach. That means conducting one to five structured sessions with each client. Conducting active community-based case management by meeting each client in their environment whenever possible, coordinating and linking clients to available formal and informal community resources based on their needs, and advocating on behalf of each client to linkage into care and other services as, as needed. If you or your staff are looking for additional training specifically related to strengths-based case management, there is an e-learning module on this topic available from Effective Interventions. A link to the course is available in the link section at the end of this presentation. We are now going to review the four phases of artist implementation. Armand will begin this, the getting started phase. Thank you very much, Melanie. So as we have mentioned before, there is a lot of detail that takes place during the planning and also the implementing of artists. And one of the resources that is available to help guide you and provide you with more detailed information through this process is the artist implementation manual and we encourage you to access it and to refer to it as necessary. So now we are going to highlight a few concepts that can help you as a manager support the successful implementation of this strategy during the first phase, which is getting started. As you are getting ready to implement ARDAS, uh, there are several things that you might want to consider. So most likely you have probably already decided that ARDAS makes sense for your organization. Now, thinking about both existing organizational capacity and organizational readiness uh, factors will help you know how much planning and problem solving and also problem development will be needed to implement artists successfully. And specifically, and to help you think about the existing capacity of your organization, you may want to consider the current experience providing case managers available in your agency also, its strong relationships with community partners, its technological capacity, and staffing. And during the first self-paced mini-module, we included information and detail about how you can conduct an organizational capacity assessment. In addition, and as you are getting ready to implement ARDAS, there are several actions you can perform to benefit your organization. Specifically, the five actions shown on your screen could help you feel prepared and supportive of the linkage coordinators that you will be supervising. So these actions include conducting an artist implementation situational analysis, identifying potential barriers and solutions, involving management and other staff that might directly or indirectly interact with clients, developing a memoranda of agreement with community partners, and also nurturing a close professional relationship with other medical providers and staff. Mini module one also goes into detail about how you can conduct an organizational readiness assessment. And we present uh, to you with some useful tools that you can use during the module one. We also want to share a success story with you of a CBO that we work with right after they were first to implement artists. As sometimes happens, the program was funded and everyone was really excited. However, the staff and manager responsible for all the activities in the work plan were not fully aware of what this entailed. And as the team uh, began to do their organization readiness assessment, because they read that this was a good idea in their artist implementation manual, they were feeling pretty good about uh, all of the steps until they got to the part about having a close working relationship with a medical provider. 
Yes. Uh, just to clarify, a medical provider had officially been identified in the grant application process, but none, uh, nobody at the, at the team knew anyone um, at the clinic. So Sam, the artist program manager, realized they needed to fix this quickly, and before they started trying to link clients into care. So with the help of the grants manager and one of the members of the uh, board of directors who works at the medical facility, they met with the HIV Treatment Access Clinic. And um, over several meetings, they reviewed and revised the MOU that they had developed and for this application. And together, they worked out the best ways the referrals could support both of the programs and also agreed on having quarterly check-ins to ensure the process was working smoothly for both organizations. And Sam's thoughtful preparation, project implementing ARDAS, helped support the success of the program and it prevented potential frustration that clients or the linkage coordinator and the medical provider could have encountered. So, now that we have provided you with an overview and an example of the getting started phase, we want to give you an opportunity to tell us how comfortable you feel um, with several of the artist's key elements. So on your screen, you'll see uh, two boxes on the left and the right. So please respond to the two poll questions related to number one, conducting an artist implementation situation analysis, identifying potential barriers and solutions, involving management and other key staff, developing memorandum of agreement with key partners, and nurturing a close relationship with medical providers. So which ones of these elements do you feel very confident uh, conducting and which elements can be enhanced by you receiving more detailed information or support? So we're gonna, we see that people are still responding. So we're gonna give a couple of more seconds. <laughs> and we see all the responses coming in. Very good, there's still more people responding, so this information is going to be very helpful for everyone just to see uh, some of the issues that organizations are having, but also how confident they are feeling and some of the successes, and eventually to know how to better support and um, in your efforts. So thank you very much for uh, sharing the answer with us. Uh, as I mentioned, this is going to help us to understand what some of your capacity building needs are for artists. So next, um, if you have any questions, I also want to mention, uh, uh, make sure that you are taking notes and we can answer all the questions that you might have um, during uh, these or the pretty quarter uh, mini session. So next, Sarah Jane uh, Rath is going to provide an overview of the pre-implementation phase. Thank you so much, Armand. Now let's think about phase two, pre-implementation stage. We're going to review a few of the key concepts described in a lot more detail in mini module two. So external collaborations are an essential component of artists because the client may identify several different types of barriers that are preventing them from linking to care quickly. An environmental scan can help an organization assess opportunities for referrals and to and referrals from the program. Make sure that the health department knows about the artist services and that they inform any of their grantees that your organization will be providing artists to people who test positive for HIV. To enhance an external collaboration, you could conduct an environmental scan of services for referral and linkage. You could list all the potential partnerships. You could examine all the local social service providers. You also need to develop a memorandum of agreement. You could update existing collaborations on a regular basis, and you could also contact the health department. Connections and collaborations within your organization are essential. All departments that conduct HIV testing should know about artists and the route to contact the in-house artist provider. Inform all departments about artists either via an email blast or a um, organization-wide face-to-face meeting. Here are some ideas for intra-organization collaborations. Referrals from HIV testing units. Inform all departments of artists. Provide and develop a short in-service on artists. 
make sure all potential sources of referrals have been exhausted, and provide a name and number for referrals to contact. Integrating artists into the organization. Intra-organization support for artists is key to the success of the intervention. All organization staff working on complementary or parallel interventions need to understand and support artists at its most basic level, increasing linkage to medical care. Intra-organization communications, if done correctly, can minimize the perception that artist staff are getting special treatment or stealing clients. Moreover, staff members who understand the value of artists will be more inclined to work collaboratively with intervention staff and market artists within their networks. For example, if you have a navigation program, how can these programs work side by side to support the overall goal of the program? Some clients may be more appropriate or more ready for one program or another. Making sure staff understand how clients can best be supported is critical to your overall success. Some integration opportunities you can consider are recruiting clients using social network strategies, implementation of motivational interviewing in the artist intervention, the use of artists in jail, prison, and engage HIV positive clients from jail or prison in care. So we want to share with you a collaboration success story. And it's a program that we worked with. As we build the foundation of our artist program, collaborations are essential. As we mentioned, most, most artist programs link to some sort of HIV testing program, but that is not always enough. One artist program we worked with was having a difficult time recruiting enough clients to their artist program. The program manager, Maria, conducted a review of their data to see where the artist clients came from. The review showed that 80% of the clients were referred by the local health department's HIV testing program. That surprised Maria because the organization had a mobile testing van that was very busy. Maria scheduled a meeting with Lawrence, the prevention education manager, who oversaw the mobile testing program. Lawrence assured Maria that the testing van's procedure manual specified linking all new positive results clients to the artist program. When Lawrence and Maria looked at the referral numbers, they realized that the outreach staff had not made any referrals to artists in the past two months. And that is when Lawrence connected the dots. There were two new outreach workers who had not been orientated to the goals of the artist program and the former outreach worker had accepted a job at the local health department. Maria and Lawrence scheduled a meeting with the two outreach workers and the two linkage coordinators to meet and review the program goals and core elements. But Maria was just getting started. She was excited about the potential increase in internal referrals, but there was still something else she wanted to look into. Maria had noticed that about 30% of the artist clients dropped out of the program before they linked to care. Maria did a review of the case notes of those clients who were not linked to care. She noticed that the majority of clients who dropped out did not have transportation to get to the primary HIV clinic in the community. Although transportation was not identified as one of their barriers to linkage in the strengths assessment, Maria saw this pattern. The artist team met and talked about this issue and felt that it would be important to find an external collaborator to help provide transportation for their clients. Maria's ability to examine trends and internal and external collaborations made a big difference in the success of their artist program. So now that we've provided you with an overview of the pre-implementation phase, we want to give you another opportunity similar to the one that you completed with Arman, to tell us how comfortable you feel with several of the key elements. And please, once again, respond to the two poll questions that you see up on this screen. Think about conducting an environmental scan of services for referral linkage to care, listing all the potential partnerships, examining all the local social service providers, 
developing MOAs, Memorandum of Agreement, updating existing collaborations on a regular basis, contacting the health department, coordinating with internal agency departments. So I'm going to give you a couple more seconds to complete this. And as Armand mentioned, this is invaluable information to help us in the final live webinar session that will be held on March 28th. Okay. A couple more seconds. And it looks as if everybody is done. So thank you for completing the poll. And I'm going to hand this over to Melanie, Melanie Graham, who's going to provide an overview of the implementation phase. Thanks, Sarah Jane. Now let's think about phase three, the implementation stage. This is where your linkage coordinators are actively working with newly diagnosed clients to help link them into care within 30 days. We're going to review a few of the key concepts described in detail in module three, which will support your ability to supervise these programs for success. As a manager or supervisor, you will need to monitor the staffing of the program. The staff positions to consider when implementing artists are program director or manager, uh, the linkage coordinator, supervisor, and evaluator, as many linkage coordinators as needed to serve the population based on a small caseload of 25 to 30 clients at any given time, and a contract manager if the, implement, if the implementing organization is a health department. The, the Artist Implementation Manual provides guidelines around suggested staff time for each position. These are just suggestions. Each program will have to review their own resources. One suggestion is for the program director at 25% time and the contract manager at 25% time and the evaluator at 15% time, a linkage coordinator supervisor at 7% of the time, and a full-time linkage coordinator. In Artists, the Linkage Coordinator helps the clients learn new information, such as the benefits of accessing medical care and discuss strategies to achieve the client's goals. Now, during sessions, the Linkage Coordinator may discuss strategies to overcome barriers to visiting an HIV care provider. The Linkage Coordinator and the client may practice or role play interactions between the doctor and patient, if that is helpful to the client. Build a working relationship with providers such as testing centers and community partners in order to build and maintain referrals. Now, to support the work of these staff, several structures can be put into place for success. As a manager, you will need to consider the needs and priorities of your program. CEPA providers are able to support you to design supervisory systems that make sense for your program. Common types of supervision consist of administrative, clinical, supportive, and multidisciplinary. In mini module three, we'll go into detail about each of these types of supervision and how they may benefit your program and staff. Now, the, the artist client flow diagram is a useful tool for you and administrative supervision supervisors for a simple picture of the artist process and the responsibilities of the linkage coordinators and program staff. The three critical elements of artists so that you as the manager understands the core tasks of your staff. These are one, recruit clients, two, deliver artist sessions, and three, link to care. This graphic can be downloaded at the end of this presentation. Now, I want to share another story of something we think is pretty amazing. After conducting an artist training with a large group of CBO staff from many different agencies in an urban center, Amy from the local health department reached out and said they felt like the trainees needed more support. They were implementing artists, but each CBO was in a slightly different comfort and success level with their program. We worked with them to help set up a cross-organization collaboration for a monthly artist coaching conference. In this way, linkage coordinators from a very well-known established FQHC, linkage coordinators from a small ASO focusing on trans women of color, linkage coordinators working primarily with the substance use community, and linkage coordinators from health departments were all able to come together in a safe and non-competitive environment to help each other resolve difficult cases. But even more importantly, this di diverse group of individuals with varying backgrounds and specialties were able to increase coordination and referral between agencies, identify service gaps and breakdowns in coordination or communication between programs. The group also facilitated peer-to-peer -peer professional development by providing a forum for learning more about strategies, resources, and approaches across disciplines.
Amy's ability to coordinate multiple organizations to support coordination, increase referral systems, and linkage to care for clients made artists effective in their area. Now, now that we've provided you with an overview of the implementation phase, we want to give you an opportunity to tell us how comfortable you feel with several of the key elements. Please respond to two poll questions. Thinking about developing staffing plans, describing the artist's client flow, understanding the artist's session overview, providing different types of artist supervision. Which elements do you feel very confident conducting, and which elements can you benefit from more detailed information or support? I'll give you some time. I see people are still voting. Okay. Oh, a couple more. I love this interaction. Thank you all so much for participating in this poll. It helps us understand your capacity building needs for artists. Next, BA is going to provide an overview of the maintenance phase. All right, thanks, Melanie. And again, thank you all for participating in the poll. We get really excited when we see those numbers of people voting, so thank you. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to think about this final phase, phase four, or the maintenance phase. And this is where you monitor and evaluate your program and determine if adaptations are needed to improve your implementation. So we're going to review a few of the key concepts that are described in much more detail in Mini Module 4, and this will support your ability to monitor these programs for success. So there are several actions that you can take to benefit your organization's evaluation of the artist program. Specifically, you can identify the types of monitoring questions that you want to answer about your artist program. You can select the specific artist elements that you want to measure. You can verify the tools that are needed to capture this, this artist information for your program. You can also develop some processes to review the collected artist data to help inform your decisions. And you may also want to examine trends to make adjustments to your artist program. So here, there's a, just a snapshot of an example of an evaluation tool from the implementation manual. And this can be used as is, or it can be adapted to better meet the needs of your organization. So if you take a look at this performance process form, you can see that it helps your linkage coordinators keep track of scheduled appointments, of emergency appointments, maybe the need to reschedule or no-shows as well as completed appointments and any brief notations of barriers or other comments. So you can use these forms as is, or you can adapt them to what works in your agency or your setting. Really, these are just ideas and suggestions that have been developed for you to use if you find them helpful based on your program design. The artist program provides you with these built-in tools and forms that can be easily used to monitor and measure the key elements of your program. Training your linkage coordinators to accurately use and complete these forms will make it much easier for you to be able to track your progress and your successes. These forms, as I mentioned, can be used as is or adapted and incorporated into your current forms that your organization is already using. So artist forms that are often used for these monitoring and evaluation activities include the session activity forms, the session activity form summary, the artist monitoring worksheet, the artist performance process indicator form, the artist fidelity assessment quarterly report template. So all of these forms are in the implementation manual. They can be downloaded from Effective Interventions. And as we mentioned, they'll also, you'll be able to download the manual at the end of the presentation. And all of these forms are also available uh, on the website when you're watching the mini modules. Those resources are there for you to download as well. So the other thing we want to think about is adaptation of artists. Often, your monitoring and evalu evaluation efforts lead you to reflect on ways to make the program work better in your setting or community. As the manager, you want to make sure that your artist program is implemented with fidelity to ensure the best results for clients. 
there may be certain situations when an organization is interested in making changes to artists. Typically, these situations are related to increasing the effectiveness of artists by reducing the burden on staff or clients in special circumstances. But remember, before making any adaptations, it is strongly recommended that the organization try implementing artists as designed first. It is also required that agencies consult capacity building providers to support any of these proposed adaptations. In Module 4, we talk about these situations in more detail. And your friendly SEBA providers um, are a great resource for this as well. So we have one more success story that we want to share with you. Um, and this is really around adaptation. And so we worked with this agency that decided that they wanted to make some adaptations to their artist program. This is a CBO that covers a large geographic area with limited providers in the area. As they examined their artist program, they realized that they were having a hard time getting clients to come into the office for these five sessions within the required 90 days. Vanders, the artist supervisor, was concerned that maybe the linkage coordinators were not following the strengths-based approach because the clients just were not coming in and were not linking to care in a timely manner. Vanders called the full artist team together to get their input on what this cause was. The team then brainstormed several issues that they felt were impacting the program success. Um, and they came up with this list. So they came up with the idea that the clients just have too many problems. The clients are usually working full-time or multiple part-time jobs for financial reasons. And it's really hard for them to find the time to travel to their center for their appointment. And the three linkage coordinators all wear multiple hats, meaning artists really only covers about 25% of their time. So it's hard for them to manage their time effectively. And then additionally, one of the linkage coordinators reported that when they have done home visits with the clients, that the outcomes were much better for getting the clients to link to care. Vanders then contacted us, the SEBA provider, to see if this was something he could submit a Chris request for to see how to address these concerns. We worked with Vanders and his team to look at their process monitoring data and their fidelity assessment data. We then help the team to do a simple check-in with the clients to see what types of changes to the program would make it easier for them to attend sessions and address the barriers they identified to be able to link to medical care. In the end, Vanders and the team identified three complementary adaptations they could make to artists that would increase success without affecting the core elements of the strategy. First, to address client needs to minimize the time required to travel to the office to conduct a session and travel back home, which was three hours for many clients, uh, it was determined that artist session two, three, and four could be conducted over the phone. And then also to address client needs related to time, it was determined that one of the sessions, two, three, four, or five, could be conducted by a home visit if needed. And finally, to address the needs of staff and clients and accommodate travel and scheduling conflicts, a linkage coordinator could extend the five sessions over five months if needed. So with thinking about these, Vanders also decided to implement a biweekly group supervision session for the three linkage coordinators to continue to support their comfort with strength-based case management and team problem solving with clients having a difficult time linking to care. Vander's willingness to examine the underlying concerns and needs of both clients and staff made a big difference in the success of their artist program. So now you know what's coming next. Um, since we've just provided you with an overview of the maintenance phase, we want to give you an opportunity to tell us how comfortable you are with these concepts. So we have these two poll questions again, thinking about uh, identifying the questions you want to answer about your artist program, selecting the artist elements to measure, verifying the tools needed to capture artist information, and examining trends to make adjustments to your artist program. 
which ones do you feel very confident conducting and which elements can you benefit from more detailed information or support? So go ahead and vote. We love watching those numbers come up. Um, and again, at the bottom, if you have any other ideas or thoughts about this concept that, as we've been talking about it, we'd love to have, have those, type those in. Um, again, let's keep those numbers going. Makes me feel like I'm a game show host as I watch you all vote and, and watch our numbers go up. We get really excited about all of this information, so hearing from you is really, really makes us even more excited about all the next steps we have planned for you. Okay, looks like we've got most people voting. Again, share any other thoughts in the chat that come to you as we move on. So we are going to go ahead and continue on, and Armand is going to provide an overview of some other helpful resources that are available to you. Thank you very much, VA. So I'm sure you're familiar with some of these websites, but I, we want to emphasize why these uh, resources are important in the implementation of ARDA. So the first one is the Effective Interventions website. Here you can find some information and also some tools and training and other resources related to ARDAS or any other intervention or strategy that you may want to implement uh, or that you are already implemented within your agency. Then the CDC section on evidence-based interventions presents a description on how to integrate these interventions into your organization and it could provide you with some recommendations on how to uh, interweave artists with the other interventions that you are also implementing within your agency. The CDC website also provides you with many other research and resources that could support your efforts linking clients to care through artists. And the HIV.gov website, it's a uh, site that is very rich in content and updates and campaigns and other resources available that you could to, uh, you could access to support your local efforts. And while well, you are not alone, there are also a lot of tools and resources to help you successfully implement ARDAS. Now, CDC funds the Capacity Building Assistance Project to and all the uh, CIVA providers are accessible um, for you to, for, for your consultation and support through this process of implementing ARDAS. And we're um, only, the, the four of us presented today, we're only four of them uh, collaborating on this webinar, and that is PROCEED, ETR, GSI, and the New York Department of Health and Mental Health. So keep us in your toolkit as a resource, and remember, um, as a directly or indirectly funded CDC grantee, capacity building assistance services are provided to you free of charge. So. For the next step in the Artists for Managers course, uh, we invite you to now begin watching the four pre-recorded mini-modules. Each mini-module will take approximately 30 minutes and you can watch them whenever it is convenient for you. The links are, will be uh, live right after this session and up until March 27, the day before uh, the live uh, TA follow-up session. So, um, mark your calendars, that is uh, for the live session, Live Artists for Managers TA session, TA session on March 28th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, Noon Central Time, and 1 p.m. Eastern Time. That is the time that we are uh, conducting it. So to access these uh, recordings, just log into the Artists for Managers site, and we have provided the, uh, provided you the link. Um, at the bottom of the bottom left of the of your screen, that says access pre recorded modules. So you just click on it, and if you click on the button that it that sends you to browse, uh, it will take you right now. Just hold on a minute. Don't do it right now, but uh, it will take you to uh, access those um, pre recorded modules. Um, we strongly recommend that you take notes. So this is something that we are recommending for uh, the mini modules. As you watch them, they are pre-recorded, so we will not be there to answer any questions. But please take notes as you watch each one of them. And at the end of the module, uh, you will need to complete a short, uh, a short evaluation that includes a section to enter all the questions that you might have. And that way, we can address them and prepare ourselves to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, in advance prior to the TA session on March 28th. 
So add this um, also new screen you will see if you want to download the implementation artist, the artist implementation manual. It is right there for you to uh, access it because we talked about it during this uh, module. But at this point, we also want to answer some of the questions that you might have um, uh, about uh, artists for managers and what it takes. And I see that BA has uh, put a comment that says that we, we have time to answer your questions. So this is the time. Feel free to chat them on the on the box, and we'll address them at this point. So we'll give you a few minutes uh, in case if you have to think of what questions you may want to ask about whether the pre-recording uh, sessions or any other information that we covered uh, right now. While people are thinking about their questions, I do want to just give a little bit more information about the continuing education units. Uh, just for those of you who are, who are interested in earning continuing education units for this, please know that you will need to complete the evaluation for each of the sessions. So for today's session, um, as well as for each of the modules and the live session, and then you will um, be given the, or have, um, be able to receive the, the continuing education unit. So we will be keeping track of that um, as you complete all of the, the evaluations. So we really encourage you to take advantage of this really nice opportunity to get some continuing education units for you. Thank so you the, very much for that reminder. So please, but uh, even if you're not going for CEUs, we still want you to complete the evaluation because we are really anxious to hear your thoughts and your suggestions because we have the next webinar in a month and we would love to um, hear that hear that for you. So again, the links are, the module is right there um, on the left of your screen where it says access pre-recorded modules. Um, and so that was also the link that you should have gotten when you registered for the session. So that will take you to the, a login page where you will create a login. Um, and that is also where the slides for all of the sessions are uh, uploaded. So everything is um, on that uh, Artists for Managers mini modules um, login page. Right behind that page is the, the videos to watch the mini modules as well as the slides for all of the sessions. Excellent. And that answers some of the questions that have been uh, typed on the chat room. I don't see any other new questions. Uh, the questions that were typed uh, were related to accessing the uh, the presentation and accessing the pre-recorded webinars. Great. So again, just so everyone knows, we're not going to be sending out the slides, but you can access the slides um, from the login page where you'll access all of the video recordings of the mini modules and all of the resources to download are all behind that um, that login page that you should have gotten when you registered. You should have gotten the link for that also. But it's here, right here in the pod that says access pre-recorded modules. And it, these are live links. So from your own screen, you can go ahead and just link to that. As well as the implementation manual, if you want to download that right now, you can literally just go on your screen and click on it. Um, and you will be able to download that immediately. The other two pods up there where it says access resources, again, you can just click on each one. Um, one is for the Effective Interventions website where there is uh, many, many, many resources around artists and all of the other interventions that are supported. And um, as well as if you're interested in accessing capacity building assistance. I just want to confirm that, um, Inez, you were able to open the evaluation after all. So if you click on it and then go to Browse 2, you should be able to go right to the evaluation. And BA, could you also talk a little bit about the recording of this session, uh, where it's going to be available after we finish this session? Yep. 
So the, the recording of this particular session is also going to be in that same place behind the um, where the modules, all of the modules are. So the slides and the recording are all available on that same Artists for Managers uh, behind that login page. We and will we also the send, uh, there is also, we will get a follow-up email from today with the uh, evaluation link in it if you're having some issues doing it from from here. I can tell a couple people are trying the links and they are working. So I'm, uh, if you're having trouble, again, we will, um, don't worry, you'll get a follow-up email um, with those links in it as well. You should be able to go to where it says browse to and if you just hover your cursor over it, you can sort of double click it and copy that link also. Definitely want you to be able to fill out the evaluation, so we'll make sure you get it. Okay, we're going to wait because it looks like lots of people are typing. We want to make sure everybody's got their concerns addressed. Double checking the thank you for that. Yes, and thank you for that clarification, Dina. Uh, she mentioned that depending on the web connection, there may be a slight delay before it opens, but all of them are working. And thank you, Linda, for confirming as well. Again, it's people's different connections and different browsers can can cause challenges. So we we will make sure that you have them. And also remember, you have our contact information, so you can always shoot us an email if you need any help or you need any extra materials or links. Okay, right, great. Thank so you, it everyone. looks like it looks like we are uh, have resolved some of our tech issues. We don't have any other current questions. But again, as Armand said, please feel free to take notes while you're watching the mini modules. Feel free to email us if things come up that you really uh, want to talk about or get excited about, because as you can tell, we get excited about this and would love to talk about it. Um, and otherwise, we really look forward to reading your evaluations for each module and the ideas you come up with about things that are challenging or things that are working well in your program so that we'll be able to share them with the large group uh, you know, a month from now on March 28th, again, 10 a.m. Pacific time and 1 p.m. East Coast time, um, where we will do the next, the final step in the series of the live technical systems webinar. And we'll have a, a large panel of SEBA providers in addition to the four of us, we'll have a few other SEBA providers who have had experience working in linkage to care programs and in artists in several different settings across the country. So again, um, Sarah Jane, Melanie, and Armand, if you want to just jump on one last time and say goodbye, then uh, you, you all will hear us again on those recorded modules. And so um, again, we really thank you for your participation today and look forward to the next time. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.